In this set of four videos, we'll be looking at evolutionary developmental biology. And so let's do have a quick review from earlier in the course. Um, to the extent that we looked at development, um, it was actually seen as a constraint, right? So the number of cervical vertebrae in mammals was constrained because of the Hox genes that were responsible for the development of cervical vertebrae also being associated with cell growth and cancer risk. And when we looked at which digits were lost in lineages that evolved fewer digits, the pattern of development caused them to lose particular ones and not have, for example, total flexibility in which digits they lost. So as a reminder, right, this was the cervical vertebrae example where Hox genes were associated with increased cancer risk as well as the number of vertebrae. And when we looked at organisms, for example, like horses, but also other organisms, when they evolved to a state where they only use one digit, it was always to digit number three, and they always lost digits one and five first, and those are the ones that developed last. So the developmental trajectory acted as a constraint on the type of evolution that we saw in adults. So just as other examples, this same process isn't just in horses, we see this in skinks and chicks, the same thing. The last developed digits are the first ones to be lost, and when you go down to one digit, it's digit three. When you go down to two digits, they end up being two, three, and four. So if we look at a different group that has a different type of development of its digits, we can see how the development influences the possible evolution. So in caudates, they actually develop their digits differently. Instead of starting off with digit three and then going out from the middle, they actually start with digit one and develop across to make the five digits. So instead of being three, four, two, one, five, they actually go one, two, three, four, five. And so when that development differs, you actually see different patterns of evolution. When you look at caudates that have reduced limbs with reduced digits, they develop one, two, three, four, five. Four and five are the first ones that are lost. And when they evolve down to a point of one digit, it's digit one that they have left. So this is actually like an exception that proves the rule. There's nothing magic about digit number three. It really is the pattern of development that's guiding the type of evolution that occur. And this is actually really interesting and a relatively new and fast growing field of evolutionary biology is the relationship between development, which is how adults get their structures, and evolution, which is the relationship between fitness and which structures do well and which adults get to reproduce. So we saw it as constraints but the study of the connection between development and evolution actually gets more complex than just thinking about constraints. So to think about this, let's step back and kind of remind ourselves of some terms. So the phenotype is what an organism looks or acts like. And phenotypic evolution is usually what we care about the most, unless we're doing molecular evolution, for example. And phenotypes are what natural selection operates on, right? Natural selection doesn't act directly on genotypes, it selects on phenotypes. The genotype is the DNA of an organism, and phenotypes of organisms are determined in part by their genotypes, right? also by their environment. So selection occurs on phenotypes, but phenotypes arise because of genotypes, and heredity of genotypes is what occurs, not phenotypes. So you have like a kind of a, a mismatch, right? The selection happens on phenotypes, the heredity happens on genotypes. You need selection and heredity and variation to get your evolutionary response. The variation and heredity are genotypic traits. The selection is on the phenotype. So in order to really understand evolution, we need to understand both genotypic and phenotypic traits and their relationship, right? Because it's the genotype that makes the phenotype. And the genotype making the phenotype, that's the process of development, right? The process of development connects genotypes and phenotypes to one another. This process is that connection between the two things that are under selection and responsible for variation and heredity. So this relationship between the genotype and the phenotype is sometimes called the genotype-phenotype map or mapping. And studying this has been a long-standing part of biology in general. One of the big questions about biology is how do organisms turn into adults? But it's also been in evolutionary biology as well. And so in the next three videos, we'll look at three different approaches to understanding this genotype-phenotype map, to understanding the relationship between development and evolution. We'll look at some comparative embryology from the 1800s. We'll look at the use of some mathematical techniques to do what are called allometric studies. And then we'll look at more recent work looking at molecular genetics and using molecular tools to understand development and evolution.